Hey, Prosper Nation. It's me, Dennis Velasco, CEO and founder of Press Fair Enough. And yes, since Alamana Man, we're all about empowering SMEs. We've got a great topic today. How can SMEs positively impact the Philippine economy in 2021 and perhaps forever? Are you ready? Hi everyone, I'm Gina Santana and I'm here with Prosperna CEO, Mr. Dennis Velasco. Hope you all are having a great start to 2021. Today, we'll be exploring how Philippine SMEs will and can positively impact our country. So Dennis, welcome and great to see you. How was the start of your new year? <laughs> yeah, hey Gino, great to see you as well. You know. Um, it really is a, a, a good feeling to start the new year, but I, I say this because I'm really excited for everyone out there in the Philippine SME community. Because the new year, to me, it's it's a mental trigger. It's a sign and a symbol of uh, the ability to move on and move forward. So. Um, as you know, I'm a big believer in the power of uh, your mindset. And um, let's face it, a lot of SMEs out there were stunned by last year. And, um, you know, they need that mental trigger, um, that signal to help them create change in their mindset, which will then eventually lead to new behaviors and uh, hopefully new actions that will lead to success. So. In regards to Prosperna, you know, we're just excited because we've got so many new initiatives in 2021 that are really designed to help uh, empower SMEs here in the Philippines. So yeah, great to be here, good to see you, and um, hopefully uh, we'll have a great 2021 for the entire Prosper Nation. Definitely, definitely. Well. That's great, and we all are excited to learn more about all of those things. So let's jump right into it. So our first question is, what's happening with the state of Philippine SMEs in the Philippines? Yeah, so um, whether it's the Philippines, SMEs, medium-sized companies or large companies, basically entire world, right, went to hell in a handbasket. But if we just look at the Philippines for a minute, um, there's a few things that are um, really worth identifying and you know one of those is the Philippines has been on such a huge massive successful run uh, in terms of its economic success for really the last almost 30 years and um, last year was of course uh, you know a big hit right and the GDP in the Philippines uh, based on research, uh, you know, from those of the likes of Bloomberg, um, dropped on average by 10%. And um, this is, you know, really not good no matter what side of the spectrum. And obviously with SMEs um, having less resources, you know, they were hit the hardest. But probably the worst part, in my opinion, of the economic news in the Philippines was the unemployment. You know, the, the jobless and the number of jobless people in April of last year hit an absolute all time high, you know, and the Philippine government reported uh, over 7 million Filipinos were jobless. And, uh, you know, that translates to a record high of almost 18% of the people out there on average. Right. So what that means is there were some really big highs, probably double that, almost 40 percent. Right. And the, the average was just a, a huge hit. So um, based on that, I mean, there's no doubt that Philippine SMEs, you know, uh, not just last year, but moving into 2021, you know, are still facing that huge challenge. And, you know, if you look at the economy uh, from a technologist point of view, uh, I really look at this as a disruption. And, you know, 
as weird as it might sound, you know, disruption in a way is a good thing, right? Because that means that there's a, a lot of opportunities. Um, but, you know, it all depends, right? Depends on what people decide to do and, um, you know, what they're committed to doing. Yeah, so all these news, you know, for the past couple of months, it's been really hard for us Filipinos. So maybe the main, the main question here is, how about the small businesses? Paano kami mga Filipino SMEs? From our point of view, the cool thing is, we're actually an SME also, diba? Because, you know, we're only uh, a little over 30 employees. And we started, you know, uh, as a startup, right? With just, you know, a few people. And uh, as I mentioned, Kanina, as a tech guy, it sounds weird, but disruption is actually good for business. And it's especially good for SMEs. Why? Because whether it's economic disruption or introduction of a new product, um, this type of disruption uh, was so massive that it hit all companies, big and small. And it was so rapid and most likely this kind of change that's happened is going to be permanent change. So think about it. Today, the large companies are basically stunned. Many of them haven't done anything yet. Or their policies, their hierarchies, their rules of getting things done to embrace, you know, disruption. It takes so long. But the smaller, more nimbler, but bolder, more courageous entrepreneurs and SMEs who are willing to embrace change and open their mind and find new opportunities those are the ones who have the biggest opportunity. Diba, I mean, what what have you seen from some of your uh, friends and colleagues who are out there in SMEs? Yeah, um, well, with everything that happened, you know, uh, Filipinos, maybe the natural human behavior is to adjust and look for more ways. So going back to my question, so, are you saying that uh, even though sa lahat ng yare for the past couple of months, are you telling us there's still, there's still a big window of opportunity? So, if so, sa tingin mo, what are what are the specific trends of change that demonstrate Philippine SMEs make a shift in mindset towards embracing the technology? Because you know, technology is the only way right now. Most of the businesses are running through technology and. Mm. We've been posting this through uh, for years now, and what, what, whenever the pandemic happened, dun dun talaga na corona demand for technology. So, as a tech guy, what do you think is the the trend or what happened or what is the the state of what's going to happen in the near future? Yeah, well, uh, a couple things that um, might sound obvious, but they're worth really inspecting. So uh, one of the things that jumps off the top of my mind is the whole concept of work from home. That in itself is a huge um, behavioral shift. It's a cultural shift, right? And if you think about it, SMEs have found that the work from home environment can actually work. Everybody was forced to do it. And so they didn't have any choice but to accept it, right? And this is where an example of the opportunity is for Philippine SMEs. Because prior to the pandemic, traditionally, one of the hardest things an SME could do is hire the best people. Because they were always competing right? with the big companies, all their big benefits, right? And many of the smart SMEs, right, they were able to get out of paying their rent or, you know, remove that expensive retail space that they were leasing, right? And they started having their team work from home. And then they found that their customers are all online, on Facebook, right? Number one, you Philippines on Facebook, right? 
at the same time, many of these big companies, they were so heavy in all their expenses and number of people by the nature of being a big company that they were forced to lay off massive numbers of people. And a lot of the people that they laid off were great, talented people. So what are those talented people gonna do, right? Now, over the last few months, as the Philippines has started to unlock and loosen up its quarantine rules, big companies, what do you think they did? They started going back and asking their employees, oh, sige, balik na kayo sa office. <laughs> well, the smaller companies said, I just can't afford it. What kayo babalik sa office? Let's keep doing this, right? And so that leaves a huge pool of talented people that are actually only interested in working for companies now that have a work from home environment because clearly health and safety are top of mind. So this, this is one of those things that leaves a big opportunity for SMEs because now they have a bigger access to top talent, right? That they were never able to be able to access. So that, that's just one thing, you know? I mean, you know, what you have a lot of friends and, and, and family that possibly have been impacted, you know, how have they adjusted? Have they changed their requirements in terms of who they want to work for next? Yeah, definitely. And health is the number one priority. Um, well, this happened to a lot of my friends. I'm sure our audiences right now know a lot of friends who have been, you know, terminated because of that specific reason. And for big companies and small companies, not everyone can really cope up with what's really happening. So um, maybe my question is, you mentioned about the, a, looking for a top talent. So what specific industry do you think uh, these top talents are coming from? Since we've been able to, you know, really uh, help a lot of SMEs, our company has been um, uh, really on the uh, fortunate and benefit side because we've been massively growing since our technology helps SMEs. And um, as we've been growing, we've been hiring more people. And so we're first-hand examples, right? And so one of the things that our HR team has, has seen and um, collected data on is that there are two top industries that we're seeing a massive wave of what I call career shifters, right? These are people that said, I need to move on with my career in my life. And my past career in industry is not going to give me what I need for my future and career, right? So those two industries are number one, travel and hospitality. And number two, retail. You know, one of my favorite, most simple books to read out there is a book called Who Moved My Cheese? <laughs> so Who Moved My Cheese is a very simple way of having the right mindset to find success, right? And one of the things that I learned is by reading this book, humans are obviously highly sophisticated animals, right? With the power of critical thinking and the ability, if we choose to, we have the ability to adapt and change. I mean, think about all the civilizations that used to exist, used to dominate, and now don't exist. And look at the civilizations who have flourished and existed, right? But let me emphasize again, uh, only some civilizations have the courage to take action. And so to go back to your answer, you know, we are firsthand seeing hundreds and thousands of resumes of extremely, really, really sharp people from the travel, from the hospitality, and from the retail industries, right? Because all their businesses were shut down. And now guess what they've done? They've made mental commitments, right? They've taken online courses. They've taken short courses. They're enrolled in boot camps. They're hiring and getting mentors, digital mentors, startup mentors, entrepreneurship mentors, right? 
And they're going out there looking for digitally enabled, tech enabled companies of any size because they now see the shift. So this workforce change, right? This mental commitment change of the workforce, because think about it, there's 120 million people in the Philippines, right? Everybody pretty much needs to work. So that's a good representation of the population of the Philippines, right? Mm -hmm. So the workforce and those SMEs, right? Have the potential, right? To embrace this big career shift change and SMEs can now get digitally minded people better than ever. So the way I see it, SMEs can uh, really be in a better position if they choose to embrace the future of technology by having access to resources, to people, to teammates who have that digital mindset, right? Because you need the right people in order to get the right success at your company. And so right in front of our eyes, employees um, who are also, right, the target consumer of SMEs are in full swing, right, of creating and being a more knowledge, technology-driven economy versus what's once the Philippines was just only a labor-driven economy. So that's a huge shift that we are firsthand seeing. Last question for today. Um, I hate to uh, end this so quickly, but I know we have a lot of things to talk about. But let's go right into the most very, uh, the most important question for tonight, which is what can Philippine SMEs do to not only survive the 2021, but also succeed for this coming year? Yeah, yeah, that is the key question. And again, let's start with the numbers. 120 million people estimated give or take in the Philippines, right? That's the audience that everybody wants. That's what companies want when they come into the Philippines. That's what big companies in, already in the Philippines want. Everybody wants access to this large population. But now that large population is only accessible online. Right. And the Philippines, if you look at the statistics, over 70, about 73 percent of Filipinos have smartphones. We have, so we have one of the highest smartphone penetration rates. So first and foremost is SMEs have got to accept this change and accept this mindset of the technology enabled customer. Right. Once they get past that then their first course of action is to make it easier for the 120 million people to find them online. It's just that simple. So if you don't have a big budget, and as we mentioned earlier, Philippines is number one on Facebook, right? So create an amazing Facebook business page, right? So there's a lot of free social media sites um, on top of Facebook. So you've got Instagram, you've got LinkedIn, right? And clearly, you know, everybody uses Google who doesn't, right? So by making yourself available, we call that, uh, by making yourself available online, we call that uh, your online presence. So an SME has got to commit to that online presence. So, I mean, think about it. Why would you go back to paying high escalating rent? And why would you go back just to wait for your customers to come to you and all your customers are concerned with their health and safety. <clears throat> Why would you do that when you can go straight to them on their cell phone, right? So another thing, right? Number two, what I would do is uh, do what we're doing right now, right? Is SMEs have got to find a way to get out of their comfort zone and to create content. So content to us is information that adds value. So don't just spam people with, come on, Paul, my promo come in, right? Hindi pwede benta lang ng benta, right? You walk into a mall and you see a salesperson and you just avoid them, right? Oh, I don't want to talk to the scary salesperson, right? So you got to put yourself in the minds and the shoes of the customer, right? So, um, you know, we're all customers, so naturally, 
I ask myself, right? Why should I buy from you? That's the value that you need to be able to communicate when creating content. So you can start with a simple, you know, social media post, right? Move up and maybe create a blog or a podcast and share your opinion. Opinion about products, do un un uh, unboxing events, right? And as you get your comfort level, maybe even do some Facebook live broadcasts, right? Or videos. So content is the attention grabber. That attention grabber is designed to drive the potential customer from the attention grabber to your online presence, which is their Facebook page, their Instagram page, or their online store, right? So third, uh, you know, I get it. Financial times are tough, but somehow, some way, you know, SMEs just have to bite the bullet and you've got to invest in online paid advertising. To put it straightforward, you have to spend money to make money. And I didn't make that up, right? We all learned that our grandfathers, grandmothers, fathers, moms, they all said it. You all, we all know it. Right? So don't be afraid to spend money and paid advertising here in the Philippines is cheaper than anywhere else in the world, right? Because not a lot of people are doing it. So it's the fastest, easiest, and most measurable way to get ROI, right? So, you know, the big companies aren't spending a lot on advertising. So, you know, get to that audience now before it becomes too expensive. Win that category that you're in, that niche that you're in, and you can get that momentum and then it's gonna be hard to stop, right? The last thing I'm gonna say is, um, and this is not just a rule of business, but it's a rule of life, it's a rule of relationships, and it's all about being consistent. It's now all about digital relationships. And Prior to digital relationships, your traditional relationships also required you to be consistent. Otherwise, you'd never have that beautiful fiance of yours, right, Gino? Yes. <laughs> right? So, again, 72% uh, plus of the Philippine population is on a smartphone, and it's the most affordable way to get in front of them. So, SMEs have got to create and find a comfort level of creating that digital relationship with their customers today or the potential customers of the future. And so, you know, I just wanna keep it simple, Gino. Uh, and so I could pretty much guarantee anybody out there that follows these, you know, simple tips and advice that I've given, um, I can pretty much guarantee that anybody out there could get success, assuming that you've got a good product, right? Um, that is a whole different conversation. Well, that's some, that's some straightforward advice that you guys can basically get it for $10 over the internet. But now we're giving it for free. Well, uh, with that being said, you know, um, so can you tell us more about Prosperna and how Prosperna can help SMEs like um, our viewers out there? Yeah, sure. So, um, well, as many folks already know out there, we at Prosperna, you know, we're super passionate about empowering SMEs, especially here in the Philippines. There's no other company, there's no other technology company, there's no other software company out there that's more committed than we are. And so our mission is to empower 100,000 Philippine SMEs, right, with the simplest and most affordable e-commerce software, right? And what, what I love about our mission is that we are living, breathing examples of how everything that I've said so far has helped us grow. And we're honestly not that different than any other SME. So if we can do it, you can do it, right? And it just takes the mindset, accepting change and you know, taking that leap of faith and embracing technology, right? Believe it or not, despite the pandemic, Prosperna grew by over 260%. Why? 
because SMEs who were brave enough, they chose Prosperna because they wanted a simple way that without any coding, without any development or software skills, they could start marketing their products and services online. They could accept payments and they could automatically book shipping, right? Just get their products in front of their customers and to their customers. That's it. Well, that's it, everyone. Stay tuned <laughs> for more information from Prosperna about small to medium sized business trends and tips on how to grow your business. For more advice like this on how to leverage e commerce software to grow your business, book a free demo with us at www.prosperna.com. Click the subscribe button down below and hit the bell for notifications. Don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. So that's it. Um, Dennis, any last uh, mess messages for our fans out there? Just want to say, let's go Prosper Nation! All right. Um, till next time, guys. <laughs>